Now that we've got all of our peripherals plugged into the board, let's uh let's tie everything all together. But first, of course, let's uh, save this file out so we don't have to uh, we don't lose it. And then we can also borrow from the file to add into the file we want to combine everything together in. So let's do that in analog input NeoPixel. This had all the uh, the switch in it right here, and it has the NeoPixel stuff here, as well as the serial port stuff. So what we'll do is we'll actually make a copy of this so that we can leave the original one intact. And we'll change the name of this to reflect that it has piezo. Like that. Okay. So how do we want to add this in? What do we want it to do? Well, let's start out by just uh, grabbing pin 2 driven out constant. We'll make a copy of that and go back into the new code we're going to work on and put it in here in the setup function. Like so. And just, uh, I'll go back to low because that feels more normal to me. And now let's go and grab the tone command. We'll make a copy of that and go back into our code. And where do we want to add that in? Well, let's put it in here right where this delay is because, well, the tone is actually like a delay because it stops and stops running code and plays this tone for a duration. So let's just uh, comment out this delay. And what we'll do is we'll take the delay val and put that for the duration. And then for the, instead of having the array of melody frequencies, let's actually do something based off of this sensor value that we read from the potentiometer. So let's go create another variable. We'll call it freak, short for frequency, equals zero. We'll initialize it. And then down here, let's assign it a value. Let's say, let's start out with uh, maybe sensor, sensor value times four. So this will cause it to put out something that's roughly 4K hertz down to zero hertz because the analog read is 1K down to zero. And this will multiply that by four. And then put put the variable name here, like so. So before we load it, let's uh, let's fix this. I just noticed that this was uh, not what I wanted. One was not strong enough. That's why the NeoPixel uh, pixels were not very bright. So now let's load that and see what it does. Okay, so now you can see that the LED still moves down and it creates the frequency up to about 4K. So now let's get even more funky and let's uh, change this constant 4 to a variable. We'll call it Mult, short for multiply. And when the LED is green, we'll take that as our low frequency. We'll say mult equals, say, 2. So it can go from 0 to 2K. And then if its LED is red, we'll make it go much higher. We'll say the maybe 8. So then it'll go up to 8K. And then, of course, we need to actually create the variable 
we'll say int mult equals zero to initialize it. And let's try that. Okay, so uh, let's zero in on that. And remember it was at the zero position. So now if I turn it up, it's not as high as it was the first time. I think that's the, the two times multiplier. So let's flip the switch. And now the LEDs are red and you can see that it's much higher frequency. Okay, very cool. One last thing I want to point out before we leave this video is in the preferences, you can turn on enable autosave as well as save when verifying and uploading. Because uh, otherwise, if you forget to save it like I've been doing uh, in all these videos, then you just lose it if you forget to save it. But this prevents that. You can also, you know, I've been shrinking this so we can see more of the screen, but you can also turn off the panel down here. And those messages may be interesting uh, when you're debugging. Some aspects of the Arduino, but uh, you know, mostly you don't need to see that.